Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to Triggered Precision Machine. Thanks for joining us. Today we have a pretty interesting episode. This is gonna be a follow-up to an episode that I did several months ago on barrel cleaning. That sparked a pretty healthy debate in the comments section. Some people agreed, some people disagreed, some people had slight changes to their method of barrel cleaning for their precision rifle. When it's all said and done, everyone's gonna have a slightly different method, I think. I'm a big believer in there are multiple ways to get from point A to point B efficiently. So everyone's gonna have their own different variation on how they clean their precision rifle barrel, right? Because every rifle is different, every reload is different, every cartridge has different characteristics and how it's going to foul the barrel. And also every barrel has slightly different characteristics on how it's going to be fouled. So uh, this is just a chance to get a little bit more information and take all of this information that you guys personally have, stuff you've read, stuff you've seen, stuff you've seen here, and take it back to your rifle cleaning station and make the most educated decision as you can with the information that you have and come up with your own variation of your rifle barrel cleaning method. So without further ado, we need to do something very important first. We need to announce the winner for the 2023 TPM KYL challenge. So that started back in September. It ended on December 1st. We had a little bit of a delay getting that out. Things have just been really busy here in the shop. So let's announce the winner for the challenge. All right, guys, first up, as I just mentioned, the KYL challenge winner. Um, let's just go over what that challenge was for people who didn't tune in a couple months back. This was a challenge that started back in September and it involved a uh, printable target that was free to download on the triggerprecision.com website. And what it was, I'll throw a picture up on the screen now, but it was five circles on this eight and a half by 11 target that got progressively smaller. So the first one was fairly generous and then it got progressively smaller after that until the last one was just over a half of an inch in diameter. So it takes some very fancy shooting to clean the target or shoot it um, in order and make a hit on every single circle uh, without missing. So the catch was if you miss on any of these circles, you're done right there and you lose your opportunity to get full points on the target. So uh, we had 265 submissions. We had 42 perfect scores submitted. So fantastic shooting to you guys. Uh, several of these were shot with TPM rifles, which was really cool to see. Um, so I'll make you guys, uh, I won't make you wait any longer, but the winner for the whole challenge was Jason Rademacher. He entered a clean target back on October 1st. So let me back up a little bit. We had so many uh, perfect scores on this challenge that the way that I determined the winner was whoever submitted a perfect score first. So Jason submitted his target back on October 1st, uh, perfect clean target. And he also sent me a nice email, kind of uh, an overview of his rifle and then the reload that he used to do it. So we'll go over that real quick, uh, just for you guys who are interested. And I'll throw a picture of Jason's target up on the screen right now. Jason shot a Tika T3X. It was chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, topped with a Vortex Viper PST Gen 2 5 to 25, AccuTac PC4 bipod, sawtooth rifles, Arca rail, MDT SRS buttstock, MDT vertical elite grip, and a rear bag made out of an army sock with a pantyhose liner and silicone beads. So pretty impressive. And his load was, uh, once again, 6.5 Creedmoor, he loaded these up with the 140 grain Hornady ELDM, 42 grains of H4350, CCI 450 primers, and Lapua small rifle brass. So awesome work, Jason. You have some stuff coming your way. Um, I'll get in touch with you. I need to get your, uh, your shirt size and get you a sweatshirt and some other stuff heading out. Thank you for your participation in the competition. And uh, once again, everyone who did enter a target, thank you very much and great shooting. All right, so we just wrapped up our last challenge for 2023. We're nearing the end of the year, so we need to come up with a challenge to run the first quarter of 2024. So if you guys have any ideas, post them in the comments section, shoot me an email, sean at triggeredprecision.com, give me your ideas and we'll get it started hopefully in the first couple weeks of January and run that through the first quarter of the year. All right, guys, now onto the bread and butter of this episode right here. And like I mentioned before, this is a follow-up to a video on barrel cleaning that I did several months back. And barrel cleaning is one of those things that everyone has their own opinion and that's perfectly fine. As long as it's an educated um, opinion on how you should do things, then great. If you're just blindly following someone because that's the way they say to clean your barrel, then you might wanna educate yourself and come up with your own ideas and understanding of the process so you can develop your own method. 
If you guys haven't watched that first video that I put out regarding barrel cleaning, it might be beneficial for you to go check it out. I'll put a link down in the description. Now we have a little bit better understanding of my opinions, methods, and so on and so forth when it comes to uh, barrel cleaning. Now let's talk about the topic for the day, and that is going to be material removal from the inside of your bore. So when we talk about material removal, we're talking about removing our carbon fouling, copper fouling. Uh, it could be rust, it could be uh, dirt if you're out hunting and you accidentally lawn dart your rifle into the dirt. These are all things that we need to get out of our bore. Um, we talked about the cleaning intervals in the last video, so we're not going to get into that. But for the sake of this video, we're going to talk about getting those things out of our bore and the methods that we can use to do that. So first off, we have two different methods that we can use to remove those materials from our bore. First off, we have a mechanical method, and that's using commonly using our brushes, whether that be a nylon brush or a copper bronze brush. And we also have chemicals that can remove those materials from our bore. And we can also use a combination of those two, which is usually very, very effective. So first off, let's talk about chemical removal of materials from our bore. All right, so there is an absolute ton of bore cleaning chemicals out there on the market these days. Some of them work very well. Some of them don't work hardly at all. Um, what I have here in front of us are five different containers with different chemicals that I commonly use here in the shop. So from, uh, let's see, right to left for you guys, it's going to be a Bortec copper solvent, Bortec C4 carbon solvent, simply Croil. Then we have Wipeout Patch Out, and then we have Hoppy's Bench Rest. So I think I got all those right. Um, so what I did was I started this experiment back on October 30th. I placed a 168 grain Sierra Match King 308 caliber bullet inside each one of these solutions and I let it sit for a while. So I had an initial weight of the bullet using an AMD FX120i lab scale. So it's a very, very accurate scale. So we had an accurate starting weight and then after a period of sitting in the solutions, I took them out, rinsed them off, blew them off with compressed air so there was no residual water or chemicals, and then I weighed them for a final weight. So once again, the starting date was October 30th and the end date was November 19th, so right around 20 days there. And we'll go over the uh, starting weights for each of these chemicals and then we'll go over the finish weights and I'll give you my thoughts on how this plays into our material removal from our bore. All right, so let's go over the numbers real quick. And I have these in a little bit of different order on my computer here based on what you see in front of you. So I'll go by the computer order. Our first was our Bortec copper remover. That's this one right here. We had a starting weight of 168.3 grains and we had a finish weight of 168.14 for a net loss of 0.16 grains. Okay, so that is a 0.095% change in uh, the final weight of the bullet. All right, so our wipeout patch out, which is going to be this dark blue one right here, that started out at 168.04 grains and had a finish weight of 167.84 grains for a net loss of 0.2 grains or a net change of 0.119%. Our third one here is our Bortec C4 carbon removal, which it is not a copper fouling solvent but it does seem to work fairly decent. So what I notice when I'm using the C4 is after I get all the carbon out of there, I get a slight green tint on the patch, which tells me that it's also attacking some of the copper, which is kind of cool. So I decided to test it and see what it actually does. So our Bortec C4 carbon removal had a starting weight of 168.2 grains and a finish weight of 168.1 grains, which is a very, very small net loss of 0.1 grains or a net change of 0.0594%. So it does a little bit, doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, Croil, now Croil is one of those ones that there are some old timers out there and some shooters who swear by this stuff and they use it for everything from lubing their gun to cleaning their barrel and trying to remove carbon copper, and so on and so forth. Now, Croil doesn't state anywhere in its description that it is a copper fouling solvent. In fact, it's a penetrating oil. Um, still, a lot of people seem to like to use this for cleaning the barrels for whatever reason. I've been told this number of times, and I can't seem to understand why. So I decided to put it to the test, 
and we have our Croil here in this kind of uh, orangish red container. Croil had a starting weight of 168.26 grains and you're not going to believe it, it had a finish weight of 168.26 grains as well for a net loss of zero and a net change of zero. So it did absolutely nothing to the copper jacket of the bullet. Uh, our Hoppy's number nine bench rest, which surprised the heck out of me here. So that's this uh, little cup here on the end. We had a starting weight of 168.3 grains. We had a finish weight of 167.88 grains for a net loss of 0.42 grains. So almost a quarter of a percent of change in those 20 days to the overall weight of the bullet, which I thought was very impressive. And this was the leader of the pack. All right, so a very unscientific little test, right? There's hundreds of bore cleaning solvents and chemicals out there these days. These are just four that I primarily use in the shop because they're safe, they're effective. I don't have to worry about leaving them in my barrel for too long. They don't do anything to stainless steel. They don't attack the carbon steel. They're safe to use and they work well. Um, the Croil is something that I also use to clean rifle barrels, but generally rim fires and air rifle barrels. It works pretty well for those. Um, doesn't really have any sort of effect or application in cleaning a centerfire rifle barrel as far as I'm concerned, but um, still a nice test to do and it kind of confirms what we already knew. All right, so we went over how effective these were in removing the copper from the jacket of the bullet. So we saturated in the chemicals for that 20, 21 day period. Now I took it one step further and I took each of the bullets. As I said, I rinsed it off. I blew it out with air, got all the excess chemical and water off of it and I put them under a little microscope that we bought off Amazon. It's a little electronic microscope. It has a little LCD screen. You're able to save the pictures to an SD card, which is really cool. And it gave a pretty interesting perspective on what the chemicals do to the jacket of the bullet. So we'll start going through those pictures in order here. The first up we have our, uh, and by the way, we'll go by the order that we have up here. So we have our Bortec copper fouling solvent, we have our Bortec carbon fouling solvent, we have our Croil, we have Wipeout patch out, and we have our Hoppy's bench rest right here. So first up is our Bortec copper. Bortec copper did a pretty decent job. What's interesting is if we look at our magnified image here of the jacket of the bullet, you can see that it actually did a pretty decent job of etching the surface of the bullet, which is typical of what you're gonna see for the rest of these pictures. So there is our Bortec copper fouling solvent bullet jacket right there. All right, now next up we have our Bortec C4. Now Bortec C4, this is a carbon fouling solvent. And in the picture you can see that it still did a fairly decent job of attacking the surface of the bullet. So it actually etched the bullet a little bit. And as you can see in the cup right there, that chemical comes out clear and it has a little blue tint to it, which tells us that it did eat the jacket away. And the numbers that we got from weighing the bullet before and after also proved that point. So very, very light etching on the magnified image. Now, right in the middle of the bunch, let's talk about our Croil. Now, Croil didn't do anything to the copper jacket of the bullet. So the picture that you're seeing here, we can use this as a control. So this is what a unattacked copper jacket of a bullet looks like right there. So we can see some of the, the lines from the jacket forming process and it still has a nice unetched sheen to the picture. All right, now our fourth one, we have our wipeout patch out. Now this is where things start to get interesting. So wipeout patch out is a very effective copper fouling solvent. And as you can see, it did a very decent job of actually etching the jacket of the bullet very even and it took the material down quite a ways. All right, and last but not least, our most effective copper fouling solvent in this test was our Hoppy's bench rest. And as you can see, it's a very, very etched matte surface on the jacket of the bullet. All right, so pretty interesting stuff. That little microscope does a fairly decent job. And what we were looking at there was about 1000 times magnification. So it gave us a very interesting perspective on what these bullet jackets actually look like. Looking at them with the naked eye, it looks like they're just etched or frosted. Um, the more effective ones have a more frosted look. 
The least effective ones, like the Croil, the bullet looks exactly the same with a nice shiny copper jacket. So what I did after this was I was thinking about our mechanical methods of material removal from the bore. So copper bronze brushes and nylon brushes are two main sources of mechanically removing the material. So what I did was I took another bullet, I weighed it, and then I went ahead and I started just attacking it with a nylon brush. I had another bullet, weighed it, attacked it with a copper brush, and I went five minutes straight of rubbing on the bullet with those brushes, and then I weighed them afterwards to see if there was any mechanical material removal from doing that process. All right, we'll get right to it. Our numbers for our bullets for the mechanical removal. Nylon brush first, we had a starting weight of 168.18 grains and a finished weight of, I know you're not gonna believe this, 168.18 grains for a net change of zero. Kind of figured that was gonna happen to be honest. If we just look at the material properties of nylon versus the copper jacket, Nylon is far, far, far softer, and it's not gonna do anything to mechanically remove anything from the surface of the copper jacket. So then we go to our bronze brush, and we had a starting weight of 168.28 grains and a finished weight of 168.26 for a net change of 0 0.02 grains or a net percentage change of 0 0.01188%. So as we compare that to our chemical test before, that net loss of 0.02%, or I'm sorry, 0 0.02 grains for the copper bronze brush was less than even our dedicated carbon, carbon fouling solvent, the Vortex C4, which removed 0.2 grains. So it removed 10 times more than the copper bronze brush did with five minutes of concentrated work on one side of the bullet. So similar to the chemical portion of the test, I took those bullets and we looked at them under 1000 times magnification under that little Amazon microscope and the results were pretty interesting. All right, first up on the screen, we are gonna throw that screenshot of our Croil soaked bullet jacket up there first because we're gonna call that the control for the whole experiment, right? That jacket was unchanged by soaking in coral. The bullet looks exactly like it would if you pulled it out of the package. So what we see here is once again, we see the drawing lines from the formation of the bullet by the manufacturer. There are no lines at all from mechanical uh, removal from this bullet or chemical exposure. So that bullet is as it was. Now let's take a look at our nylon brush bullet. So if we see here, the bullet was positioned so the brush stroke should be going from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen or in that fashion, that vertical fashion. And what you see once again is very faint draw lines from the manufacturer of the bullet when they formed it that are running horizontal across the screen. There are really no vertical lines on the screen that show that the nylon brush did anything and our data that we got from the scale supports that. There was no material removal from this bullet. All right, now this one was pretty interesting. This bullet was once again positioned so our brush strokes would run vertically and that's what you see there in those lines that run roughly vertical on the screen. So the copper bronze brush actually did mechanically attack the jacket of the bullet and it removed a very, very small amount. So comparing those two side by side, you can see that the bronze brush did quite a bit and our nylon brush didn't do so much. All right, so really interesting stuff. In all of my years of shooting, I have never once taken the time to actually see what these chemicals will do to the copper of a bullet jacket. Now, this is a very good representation of what these chemicals do inside your bore because the copper on the jacket is the same copper that you're going to deposit throughout your bore in the form of copper fouling. So really interesting stuff. And seeing it through that 1000 times magnified image through the microscope was very interesting as well. And like I mentioned, in person, each of these bullets have very, very different visual characteristics after they came out of the solution. They all have that etched look with the exception of the bullet that came out of the croil and that bullet looks just like it did when I pulled it out of the package, but very interesting stuff. And then our bullet weights, obviously, another telling tale of how effective these chemicals are. 
I gotta say, I think the most interesting portion of this whole little experiment here, for me personally, was the mechanical methods of material removal that we tested, the nylon brush and the bronze brush. So I bring those two up because those are the most popular methods of mechanically removing something from the bore out there. There are other methods, ultrasonic is one of them, but those aren't very popular and they're not readily used by your average everyday Joe shooter like myself. So our patches, our cotton flannel patches, our nylon brush, our bronze brush, those are the bread and butter for most of the shooters out there. So that's what we tested. So back to the mechanical methods of removal. So the first one, we had our nylon brush. I went into this knowing that the nylon brush wasn't gonna do anything much, if at all, to the jacket of the bullet. And that's just based on the physical properties of the material itself versus the material properties of the bullet jacket, right? The nylon is far, far softer of a material than what you're gonna find on the jacket or inside your barrel in the form of fouling or our barrel steel for that matter. So I kind of knew going in that that was gonna happen. Now, what surprised me was the bronze brush. All right, so here I have the phosphor bronze brush that we used for the experiment. Now, this is the same brush that's available to you guys out there on the commercial market. These are readily available. They're cheap, they're disposable, they're available in a variety of different bore sizes, and they're a very good tool to have in your toolbox when it comes to barrel cleaning. So let's talk first about kind of what makes this brush different than our nylon brush sitting down there. All right, so the construction of the two brushes we have here, the nylon brush and the bronze brush, it's very, very similar. Basically, the way they're made, two twisted pairs of wire with the brush material in between those two pairs of wire and the brush material forms a spiral as it goes up to the end of the brush. So they're very similar in that respect. How they're different is obviously the brush material. We have nylon, which is a synthetic polymer-based brush. And then we have our bronze brush, which is a metal-based brush. So what is bronze? In a nutshell, bronze is basically copper that is alloyed with different materials to make it harder. That's what we have here. And that's why we saw this have a mechanical effect on removing the jacket of the bullet in the test. So this material is actually harder than the soft jacket material on the bullet, and it's harder than the copper found that you're gonna find in your bore. So yes, this will have a mechanical removal effect on your bore. Pretty interesting stuff. All right guys, so we know what our brushes now do to the jacket of a bullet and the copper fouling inside of our barrel, but what do the brushes do to the steel of our gun barrel? It's not an answer that can be given in a black and white fashion. So if we take our nylon brush here, we know for a fact that nylon is a softer material than the steel that our barrels are made up out of. So pushing a brand new nylon brush down our bore is gonna have zero effect on the physical characteristics of the barrel, the surface finish or anything like that. The problem lies in the fact that these brushes collect grit, grime, and abrasives when they go down the bore, and then when we exit the bore and we pull that brush back across the crown, it will have some sort of effect on the crown. Now, this may not degrade the crown overnight after one cleaning, after a dozen cleanings, whatever it may be, but it will have a cumulative effect, and down the road, you may have some accuracy issues because you're pulling your dirty brush across your crown. Now, Carbon and things like that that we push through our barrel, they are very, very, very abrasive. So the same thing goes for our bronze brush here. Now, here's some interesting information about the bronze brush. So the bronze, the phosphor bronze that they use on the brush typically has a Rockwell hardness on the B chart of about, I have it written down, 75 to 85 on the B chart. Okay, so if we look at our typical 416 barrel steel, this is a stainless steel Tika barrel heel here. If we look at the barrel steel on that, depending on the heat treat of the barrel steel, that could be anywhere from 24 to 36 on the C Rockwell chart. So if we look at those two numbers, so we have a 75 to 85 on the B chart and we have 24 to 36 on the C chart. How do those compare? Well, if we convert the B chart numbers, that's 75 to 85 to the C chart numbers, it's roughly zero to five on the Rockwell C chart. So the bronze brush alloy is far, far, far softer than even the softest heat treat of our barrel steel out there. So you don't have to worry about messing up your barrel by just using the bronze brush. It's same thing with the, or the nylon brush. Once we exit the bore and this brush has filled itself with 
grit, grime, and abrasive debris, and we draw the brush back over the crown, that has got to be the number one way that people mess up their barrels by using these brushes. So when we use patches, we don't have that problem because the patch gets pulled off of the jag as we retract the rod back through the bore. So I say all that to say this, you have a lot of options out there with barrel cleaning. There's a lot of great tools out there. These are great tools. In my first video, I did not mean to say you should never use brushes. They have their place in cleaning. But as we saw with the chemicals that we tested, the chemicals are a far more effective method of cleaning, especially copper solvent out of your barrel. So there are cases like really, really stubborn carbon rings and stuff like that, where we kind of have to get in there and mechanically help our chemicals using these brushes. But for the most part, let the chemicals do their work. So one of the methods that I've kind of adopted here in the shop as far as cleaning my barrels and the barrels that I break in for customers is I'll go in and attack the carbon first with the Bortec carbon fouling solvent. And once I get all the carbon out of the barrel, then I attack the copper. And it's, this is the same kind of order of events that I mentioned back in the previous gun barrel cleaning video. After the carbon's out, we attack copper. Now, what I've been doing lately is allowing the material or the chemicals to do the work for me. So one really wet uh, patch of copper fouling solvent down the bore, and I'll let it sit for half an hour, an hour, while I'm doing something else in the shop. Then I'll go back and run a couple dry patches through, and they come out bright blue. I'll run another wet patch of copper fouling solvent down the bore, let it do its work over time. And next thing you know, when you're out tinkering in the shop or doing something, your barrels clean of everything and you put in very very little time and effort it just takes a couple minutes here a couple minutes there but it's over the course of a period of time so really good way to clean your barrel um, once again you guys just information that you can use to develop your own cleaning methods i don't expect anyone to go out there and say that's the method that i want to use there's some experimentation that you need to do to figure out what's right for you and like i mentioned Every single gun barrel is gonna have different finish characteristics. So some of them are hand lapped to a mirror. Some of them are very, very rough and they're gonna foul differently. So you have to figure out what your gun barrel likes. We also talked about in the previous video, the intervals that you should clean your gun barrel. Now, we're not really gonna get into that like we did, but I'll touch on it very briefly. So I still go by listening to my barrel, so to speak. And I pay attention to the accuracy of my rifles, and when the accuracy starts to fall off, if there's no other thing that I can contribute to that accuracy degradation, then I'll go back and I'll do a very, very thorough barrel cleaning. But those intervals are very far and few between. That isn't to say that I don't maintain my barrels in the meantime. So if I'm storing a rifle that still shoots perfect, and I'm storing it for a while, then I may throw a oiled patch down the bore just to get out any sort of the carbon fouling or any of the bad stuff in there and give myself a nice clean bore next time I shoot it. Is it necessary? No, probably not. I've stored dirty rifles for a year at a time, hunting rifles, gotten them out and they still shoot perfect. There's no erosion on the bore. We shoot uh, non-corrosive components nowadays in our ammunition, so we don't have to worry about corrosion unless you're shooting some of the old uh, surplus AK ammo or something like that that does have corrosive primers. But for the most part, all of our modern reloading components are non-corrosive, so don't worry about that too much. So take the information that's out there, experiment around, figure out what works for you in your shooting situation, and develop your own methods. And one method may not work for each one of your rifles. You may have to slightly tweak that method for something that is a heavy fouling round, like a Fast 22, like a 22 250 or 220 Swift. That's gonna take a different barrel cleaning procedure than something like a 308. So take that information, figure out what works for you. All right guys, I hope you found that as interesting as I did. I was honestly shocked at some of the stuff that I found. I thought that the bronze brush was gonna have a little bit more of a mechanical effect on the jacket. I had no idea that the Hoppy's bench rest was such an effective copper fouling solvent. Um, the other two kind of fit into where I thought they would, the Wipeout and the Bortec. They were very effective, but they're also very safe to use. So that's kind of why I use them. They're safe on stainless steel, but still very effective. Now, 
This is an experiment that any one of you guys can do out there. Take your preferred copper fouling solvent, soak a bullet in there, we'll actually weigh it on your reloading scale before you soak it, write that down somewhere, let it sit in the solvent solution for a set amount of time, probably at least a week, take it out, clean it off, and reweigh it and see how effective your solvent is. If you do this with a solvent that I don't have up here, hit me up in the comments section, shoot me an email, sean at triggeredprecision.com and let me know what results you have. That's it for today, guys. Christmas is right around the corner. In fact, tomorrow will be Christmas Eve, so this video is out right in time for that. I hope you all have a Merry Christmas. 2023 has been a fantastic year for Triggered Precision Machine. I appreciate all the support that you guys have given me getting this company up and off the ground. We hit the ground running and we're gonna continue till 2024. So get your orders in now. The backlog is filling up. There's some awesome rifles coming out of this company. I appreciate all the support. You guys have a wonderful Christmas and a happy New Year's and we'll see you in 2024.